Welcome everybody. College football week four is over, which means it's time to get ready for college football week five. I'm Joe with the Game House, and today we're going to take a look at NFL draft prospects to watch in college football week five. Okay, as mentioned, we're going to go over the top five NFL draft prospects to watch in college football week five. We had a pretty good week four where there's a lot of big teams matching up and uh, each week, it will give us a new chance to see some new prospects. We're going to do five different prospects from every week, try to get to most of the draft class in the first couple of rounds and see what we can do uh, with that moving forward. So we're going to get to the ones in college football week five. So uh, the first one, Riley, Ren Riley Leonard, the quarterback out of Duke, he kind of helped make headlines with their early season win over Clemson. He's led Duke to a 4-0 record. Uh, so far this season, he's passed for 756 yards, one touchdown, and no interceptions on 67.3% percent completion. Um, he's done a lot of things where I think he went unnoticed. Uh, you know, Duke had a pretty good year in year one under Mike Elko, and they're just not a traditional bas or excuse me, they're a traditional basketball school that doesn't usually have success with football, and it's made it hard for him to gain a name. Uh, but he's going to be going up against Notre Dame this week. This is going to be a game day game that's going to Duke. College game day is going to Duke. Um, one of the best games of the weekend. Uh, two ranked teams. And he really does have good athleticism and accuracy that he can display in this game. And as we saw against uh, Ohio State this past week, Notre Dame's defense is pretty good. they got some pretty good corners who can match up with some of Duke's receivers. So it might be on Riley Leonard to kind of make things happen. So um, he's been kind of all over the place on draft boards. Some people have him as like the third best quarterback in this draft. Some maybe have him closer to five or six. Uh, he's looking like an early round draft pick so far. There's still a, a lot to be played out. So it's going to be fun to watch him and see what he can do the rest of the way. The next one up, we have Blake Fisher, the offensive tackle for Notre Dame. Now, if you remember last week, we had Joe Alt, the left tackle. Blake Fisher is the right tackle for Notre Dame. Um, Notre Dame's 4-1 this year. They suffered that loss to uh, Ohio State last week. And it was a close game, and I think their offensive line played well. They were able to run the ball, especially in the second half, but uh, just were unable to get the win. Um, Blake Fisher, again, a guy who maybe goes a little bit unrecognized because – uh, Joe Alt's at left tackle because Notre Dame's an independent team. You don't get a chance to make like the All SEC team. If you if, if people do all independent, independent teams, like yeah, he's going to be on it because it's Notre Dame and uh, you know Army and, and schools like that, UConn and UMass. Um, but he doesn't get the, the national recognition that maybe he deserves, and also plays right tackle. Uh, this isn't a game that they would have likely circled on their schedule to begin the year, but now that these teams find themselves where they are, it looks like Notre Dame playing against an elite program like Ohio State pretty well. Uh, maybe they have a chance to make the playoff if they run the table. And Duke being ranked, <clears throat> this makes it a, a very good matchup to see uh, what they can do. So their offensive line, is, <clears throat> offensive line has played well this season. Uh, I think that last year they were able to show the run blocking. This year with Sam Hartman, a quarterback, they've been able to show that they're a good pass blocking unit as well. Uh, Fisher is currently seen as a mid-round draft prospect, but could improve his stock if he plays well in this game and then moving forward. Number three, Malik Neighbors, the LSU wide receiver. Now, he started last year pretty rough for, for, for LSU against Florida State. He muffed some punts, um, you know, and really grew into his own as the seasons came on. So if you saw him initially last year, you're like, well, maybe this guy isn't, it doesn't have it, but he does. Uh, and this year has even played even better. So um, LSU has lost to Florida State this year, uh, just like they did last year, but they still look like they maybe could win the SEC West, especially with other things going on in the division. Um, and Malik Neighbors is a key factor in that. Jaden Daniels has been able to push the ball downfield, and Neighbors has been a, a recipient of that. So, uh, so far this year, 32 catches, 523 yards, and five touchdowns. Pretty good start to the season. Week five, LSU plays Ole Miss. Uh, Ole Miss is coming off a loss to Alabama, but still very much in that mix in the SEC West if they can right the ship this week. Um, so they're going to need neighbors. LSU is going to need neighbors to show off his speed and his ability to separate in this game and stretch the field. Um, plenty of talented receivers in the 2024 NFL draft. He could be as high as three. He could be as low as five or six. It, it's He's still a very good player, uh, but every week gives him a chance to fight for positioning. He could have a big game in this week, set up his team for success, set up himself for a 2024 NFL draft success. Number four, Jatavian Sanders, one of the best tight ends in the 2024 NFL draft class. Uh, Texas is impressed early in the season, beat Alabama in hour 4 0. Maybe look like they could go to the playoff because the Big 12 is kind of down. So, so maybe they can be that team that, that kind of can go undefeated or go with one loss and end up in the college football playoff. Um, as mentioned, Sanders is part of a, is one of, the, one of the best tight ends in the country, part of a really good uh, group of skill position players for Texas. I mean, uh, they got plenty of good wide receivers, and Quinn Ewers is throwing them the ball. 
so far this year, 12 catches, 268 yards, and one touchdown. That's impressive for our college tight end. We don't usually see production out of college tight ends uh, in the same way that you might see out of an elite pro tight end. So uh, good production so far for him. Uh, in week five, they're going to be playing Kansas. Kansas is a team who's given them trouble in the past when they haven't been the most quality, but now they are a quality team uh, who will test them. It's likely going to be a shootout. Kansas has a pretty good offense. Uh, so Texas is going to have to use all their weapons. Sanders has good athleticism, and he can separate. He can give Quinn Ewers uh, an open target. And if he does that, Texas can win this game, move to 5-0. and Really look forward towards you know building to that maybe playoff appearance. I'd like to see this year Sanders maybe show a better contested catch rate uh, and, and also uh, just continue to do what he's doing in terms of separation, and that could really help his stock. We know Brock Bowers is likely going to be the first tight end taken in the 2024 NFL draft. Jatavian Sanders is the early front runner to be the number two tight end. All right, number five, Shadur Sanders. Uh, Colorado has a lot of hype at the beginning of the season, so a lot of people have talked about them, but I feel like this was a good week to put him in here. We'll get to it in a second here. Colorado's 3-1. Uh, so far, they lost to Oregon. Big, big loss. I want to see how Shadur Sanders responds, first of all. But he, Shadur has been great for, for or Colorado. This wasn't his best game by any any match, any any means, but uh, he's still playing well. Four, 1,410 yards, 11 touchdown passes, one interception, 76.9% completion. And that's all with an offensive line that has not really played all that well uh, this season. And also without a running game because the offensive line hasn't played all that well. Uh, they have another high-profile game this week against USC. Now, this is going to be a lot of points. USC's defense looks like it hasn't improved all that much from last year, even though they have hit the transfer portal and, and tried to at least get better. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to see if Sanders can lead this offense to maybe have a shootout with USC. He has good accuracy, good pocket presence, uh, high football IQ. He can use all those things. He's going to be without one of his top receivers, Travis Hunter, who still has that injury from the Colorado State game, who also plays both ways. It's going to really hurt the team overall. Uh, but if he plays well, he can help his stock. I, I, you know, other people have had him, just like Riley Leonard, have him as high as quarterback number three in this class, maybe as low as quarterback five or six. It's a very talented class, so every week it's going to give you a chance to to build positioning. And if you have a chance to have the spotlight against a team uh, like USC with Caleb Williams going at it, you know, maybe not even winning this game will help his stock, but just showing he can keep on doing what he's doing will be really good. I mean, 11 touchdowns, one interception, and 76.9% completion, that's all good stuff. So I'm definitely watching Shadur Sanders this weekend. Let me know what prospects you're watching this week in the comments below. For now, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.